It's good to be increasing production, and it's good to have a big asset with this year's hottest metal. I'm with the head of McEwen Mining, Rob McEwen. Rob, welcome back to Kitco. Hello, Michael. Happy to be here. Rob, lots to talk about, but maybe we can start with the copper and silver assets first. What is Los Azulis, and how does it compare against his peers? Okay, uh, Los Azulis is a large copper deposit. Um, if you were to look at the indicated and inferred resources, it's 29.5 billion pounds of copper. That's a billion, not million. Um, and five and a half million ounces gold and 190 million ounces silver. The gold and the silver are lower grade. Um, we did a pre-feasibility study on it back in 2017 when copper was a little over $3 a pound. And it envisioned a mine that would run for 36 years. The first 13 years, it would be producing 415 million pounds of copper a year at a cost of $1.14 a pound. Um, it's quite sensitive to the copper price and it's best illustrated by the net asset value was calculated um, using an 8% discount at $3 of 2.2 billion. Now with current copper prices, you uh, use that number at the same discount rate, it's over 5 billion. So it's, it's a, very large deposit, and it's been sitting um, because of lower copper prices and the treasury, our treasury wasn't strong in the last couple of years. It was just sitting there. So we said, well, we should just put it in another company in which, and we first privately fund it and then take it public about a year from now, um, and we'd be able to finance it that way. Um, so, and the market seems to like precious metal companies and copper companies, but not something that's combined, particularly a company our size with a very large CapEx sitting in front of you. So we thought it would get better following there and enhance the value of McEwen mining. So it's a big copper project and it's exciting, especially with, it's in Argentina um, and with Chile and Peru having some geopolitical issues, uh, Argentina is looking more favorable, um, des more favorable destination for people looking for large copper projects. Maybe you can also talk about the silver assets. Mm. In the, uh, we have two assets that produce silver. One is a joint venture in southern Argentina with Hoshield Mining called San Jose. Um, they bill themselves as a silver producer and. If you take the gold and the silver and convert the gold to silver, a silver equivalent, um, our share would be 5.6 million ounces a year. And in Mexico, our El Gallo project, um, we have a feasibility study that came out this year that would extend the life by another uh, nine years. And it would be producing gold and silver in phase one you'd be up to seven and a half million ounces of silver per annum. And in phase two, you'd be up to 10 million. That would be Mexico and Argentina combined. So within the company, not only are we producing gold, we have almost a standalone silver company and a large copper play in Argentina with another copper project, copper gold project in Nevada that we'd also put into that new co. So, so you said that you've you said that you've kind of got plans uh, regarding that uh, talking to the market and then just talking about uh, focus. Um, kind of, uh, I, I, we're we're getting to the end question here, but uh, I kind of like to bring it up at the top. Uh, how did the next uh, twelve months unfold uh, with uh, both these assets? Uh, what, what do you what do you see happening? Um, we're trying to find a way to monetize them. We'll we'll be moving ahead with Los Azulas very quickly. Um, we're working on a new access route. Currently, the project, um, you can get to it five months of the year easily. The other seven months of the year, uh, I call it difficult. There's two high mountain passes. Although the deposit's at 3,000 meters, you have to go over uh, passes that are 4,000 plus meters high and snow. And we're building, started um, construction on a, or will in the next month, 
start construction on a road that will be lower altitude, give us 12 month access, be a great power corridor um, as well. So, um, and then we have uh, 44,000 meters of drilling planned for the next two, two and a half years. Uh, and that's just to convert the resource, the indicated and inferred to uh, measured and indicated, um, at least for the first five years and of that 36 year life. So uh, there's all studies and we're, we're pushing it. What we want to do is push it to a feasibility study. And, and usually there's, as you de-risk a project, uh, the value per pound goes up. Um, so just make Rob, let's uh, turn to your, um, let's turn to your, uh, existing, um, uh, producers right now. I noticed that production is up at gold bar, Nevada. What's changed. I'm smiling now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the last year and a half, two years were really hard. Um, we had the, some of the management we had were missing guidance, um, and to miss guidance in the market is unacceptable. And so we were punished. Our share price dropped. And this year, we, um, we were a little behind on one in, in the end of the first quarter. This year, we're by the end of the second quarter, we're ahead of our projections by a small margin um, for the year. And so that's going well. We had... Um, debt that was due in August of this year, we were able to extend that by two years out to August of 23. So there were a couple of moments where the covenants on the debt were causing us to have to raise money at inappropriate prices in my mind. Uh, we've, um, there was a going concern note on our financial statements and that's been removed. Um, we permitted and did feasibility study in Mexico. That's all ready to go. Uh, we're looking at expanding our operations in Timmins and have a study ongoing there. So there was just a whole bunch of things. Operations was hitting at our balance sheet is much stronger. Um, and uh, we've got the, and the prices of silver and copper are up on what, some cases over a hundred percent in the last 12 months. So those assets become much more, um, valuable to us. So, uh, going down this, we covered gold bar, but, uh, is there any other, uh, producers, uh, with under McEwen uh, that you just like to update us on where they stand right now? Um, well, uh, gold bar is in Nevada, just below, um, yeah. Nevada gold's biggest gold mine in Nevada. Um, so we have exploration programs going there, a $5 million program there. We have uh, a $9 million program going in Timmins in Argentina with our partner. We have a $10 million program going on down in Argentina um, and a small program going in Mexico. So there should be good news coming out of that throughout the year. Um, we are, there's a satellite deposit at Black Fox called Froom. And we've just completed our two um, development ramps down to it and are processing ore from it. We expect to hit commercial production in Q4 on that. And it's a very different deposit than Black Fox. It's more consistent, more homogeneous, um, larger widths. So uh, Black Fox was, when we bought it, Primero, who'd owned it before us, had pick the eyes out of it and you were really just mining but you're getting small working areas and you had to move all over the mine um, we had a flood we had a fire uh, I don't know what else we could have had maybe locusts uh, but now we're into uh, it's a shorter haul it's uh, wider mining widths it's more consistent grade and that'll go for about two years. And we are exploring over at where a mill is. There used to be a mine there called the stock mine. And we have a big discovery there as well. So we see us transitioning from Froome to stock and then to Gray Fox, where we have about a million ounces. And they're all within 
the complex, all serving, it would all utilize the same mill. So I, I, I'm happy. <laughs> um, Rob, let's step back and then uh, just talk about uh, the macro picture first. Um, I, I, you did mention uh, before that uh, there's uh, Argentina is looking better uh, versus its uh, neighbors, but uh, maybe uh, just talk about uh, Latin America. And uh, there is uh, obviously the uh, run up in uh, commodity prices. Uh, everybody's paying attention to the uh, Peruvian election as well as what's uh, unwinding in uh, the um, unwinding in Chile uh, regarding its uh, constitutional changes? Well, I mean, South America is a huge producer of copper, particularly Chile and Peru. Um, their political agenda is shifting with the elections and it's moving towards, or at least the rhetoric is more taxation on the copper producers in particular, but on the miners in general. Um, Argentina is the beneficiary of that at the moment in that it's viewed, some of the provinces are viewed as friendly to mining, not all of them. The ones we're in, San Juan, where we have our gold and silver mine, and in, uh, or sorry, where we have the copper mine in San Juan and in Santa Cruz in the south, they're both favorable to mining. And they're, they're working hard to attract capital to develop a couple of large projects. Lundin Mining is there, Barrick is there, um, Ourselves, Gencore is there. Um, some of those are moving on to developing, some are in production right now. And the government is um, going to great efforts to encourage mining there. Rob, early this year, we had a remarkable run up in crypto. I know that you follow the markets uh, carefully. Just your thoughts on uh, crypto and uh, crypto versus gold. Uh, if you have somebody that is uh, weighing those investments, what would you tell that person? I'd say gold is cheap relative to crypto. And it has a longer history of being accepted as money. Uh, when I look at crypto, it's fascinating what's happened. But it, you could go back, Michael, and look at currencies around the world and cryptos billing itself as a currency, there's never been a run like that in a currency. I mean, Swiss franc was favored and others were favored at different times, but never did you see that type of run and was it viewed as an investment. What does crypto allow you to do? It allows you to transfer money. Um, its appeal is that you could transfer it without much of a record, if any record, of who transferred it, who you transferred it to, or where you transferred it to. So it's really a facility to move money. And I think of it something like American, uh, American Express Traveler's Checks of days gone by. Um, you buy it and you can, there's basically uh, cash it anywhere. Um, Maybe it's like Western Union sending money. I view crypto as a very expensive way of transferring money. Um, I do not think it replaces gold. Um, when you see how stimulative the governments around the world have been with the creation of enormous sums of money, you're starting to see evidence of inflation. If you want to buy a sheet of plywood, it's doubled or tripled. Go to a lumber store, you want to buy some. Oil has gone from $40 to just under $80 in the space of a year. Um, you've seen silver, copper double in a year. All these are products that are inputted into our cost of living. And we're going to see a run in the price of a lot of our costs of living, a lot of the components are going to become more expensive as a result of the raw materials used to make them. Um, and I think that's when gold, gold will start looking and saying, all right, I've had a great run in crypto. What hasn't moved that is also an inflationary hedge? Gold. It's only up 15, 20% in the last year. Everything else has been moving. Um, being a contrarian investor and a student of history, I'd say, put your money in gold right now some of your money, not all of it, but I'd also look at other commodities. I'd look at grains, foods, uh, because 
you have hot weather, you have insect infestation all over the place, uh, you had disrupted supply chains as a result of COVID. There's all sorts of pent up demand right now, um, along with the inflationary impact of the currencies being, uh, the money supply being expanded to a level we've never ever imagined possible. So hold on to your seat, and buy some gold. Rob, you said earlier that you're smiling now. Uh, let's just say that I'm talking to you of June 2022, uh, and uh, the year has unfolded as you planned. Uh, what's your production profile now? And then what does McEwen Mining look when I'm talking to you in that June year? Right now, now, we're looking at 140 to 160,000 ounces um, for this year. Um, I would say we, we'd be about 180 next year, but we will have an expansion plan for um, our Timmins operations where we can see, well, we're looking to push it above 100,000 there. Um, Gold Bar will be doing um, 60 to 80,000 ounces. Um, our Argentinian asset um, contributes 70, probably 70 this year, but probably Assuming that we don't have COVID continuing, uh, we'd be up around 80, 90,000 ounces of gold equivalent. It's a mix of gold and silver. And there's a small amount of production coming out of Mexico right now. Uh, we probably, we will have done a deal on our copper. Either it'll be privately funded or joint ventured or conceivably someone will want to buy it. Um, and our silver, we will have, done some work there as well. So there's going to be lots of activity and continuing on our exploration front. And we're fully funded, right? Rob, thank you very much for speaking with Kitco. Thank you, Michael. Pleasure to see you. He's Rob McEwen. He is the founder of McEwen Mining. My name is Michael McRae, and you are watching Kitco Mining. <laughs>